Hey guys, welcome back to Matt's Workshop. Today I have a special video. I want to show you guys how I make my crackers for my whips. So if you guys want to learn how to make your very own, stay tuned for more. Now, before we can actually get cracking, you have to have something to crack with. And that is where the cracker of the whip comes into play. This is what actually breaks the sound barrier when we crack our whip. And because there's so much force on it, it tends to wear out really quickly. And that is why you have to replace it so often. Now, this can kind of add up over time and it can be annoying to have to order crackers all the time for your whip. So that is why I want to show you guys how I make mine so that you can make your very own at home. Now crackers can be made out of all kinds of material. My favorite to use is twisted Kevlar kite string because it is very durable and I find that it lasts the longest. But you can use kind of whatever you have sitting around. Other materials are bonded nylon thread. This is uh, number 69 bonded nylon thread. But, you know, you can also use the inner strands from your 550 paracord. Or, some people will use twine, like baling twine. All these things can be used to make crackers. So, you don't have to worry about going to the store and finding these exact materials. You can use whatever's around you. That being said, I will put these in the description of the video if you are interested in using these materials. Now, the tools you will need to make your crackers, besides, of course, your cracker material, are the following. A tape measure, a pair of scissors, and then depending on which method you're going to use, you will either need a pair of hemostats, which you can find on Amazon. Again, I will link that in the description below, or a pen. Now, with that being said, Let's get to work. Now one other thing that I forgot to mention is you're going to need a hook of some kind or in this case I'm just going to put this steel rod in my clamp so that I can hook my cracker material around it. Now I'm going to start off today by showing you my preferred method with the hemostats and for today's demonstration I'm going to use my Kevlar kite string. Um, depending on the material you use, you will need more or less strands, but for this Kevlar kite string, because it is already fairly thick, I just need one strand of about an arm's length. Now, I will take my hemostats and I'm going to clip it on to the end of the strand there, and I'm simply going to twist the strand so that it gets more twisted tighter twist and we know when we've reached um, the tightness that we need for twists when we loosen it and it starts to twist up on itself right there that's how we know that it's twisted enough now this I'm going to loop it over my hook or my post or whatever and we're going to fold it in half. From here we're going to take it off our hook and we're just going to slowly twist it and pinch it with our other fingers and let go and it'll just automatically twist up on itself on the end there. We're going to slowly twist it clockwise, pinch it, let go. Twist clockwise, pinch it, let go. And then once it's twisted up, you can just let go completely. And now that this is twisted up, if I let go of this end, it won't come unraveled. So that makes it really easy for our next step. From here, we're going to pull out our tape measure. And I like to make mine about eight inches long, right, for the twisted portion. So I'm going to measure this out 
eight inches. Right there is my eight inch mark. And that is where I'm going to pinch it off with my hemostats there. Now, from here, I'm going to take the end of it and untwist it so that I have two separate strands there. One on top and one on the bottom. I'm going to take that bottom strand and I'm going to simply loop it to the side and around the back so that it forms a sort of D there under the twisted portion of the Kevlar. I'm going to now loop it over the strand under that D twice. So it's looped under here twice and pull tight. And from there, we can pull out the hemostats and pull it tight. Now we got a nice knot there. I believe it's called a blood knot. It looks a little nicer than a simple overhand knot. Now that I have my knot tied in my cracker, I am going to measure out two inches of tassels. And I'm going to cut the excess strands off, leaving me with two inch tassels. Now, these are the measurements that I have found to work best with my six foot whips uh, between the five and seven foot range. Now, a bigger, heavier whip is going to require a thicker and potentially longer cracker. So it is a little bit of an experiment uh, with each whip, but this is what I found works best for my five to seven foot whips. Now, the second method that I'm going to show you today, if you do not have a pair of hemostats or don't want to get some, you can use a pen. Now this method I'm going to show you with the bonded nylon thread just to show you how this will work with this here. Whoops. <clears throat> okay, now as you can see, the bonded nylon thread is a lot thinner than the Kevlar kite string. Therefore, we're going to need more strands. So what I typically do with this size of bonded nylon thread, like I said, it's size 69, is I will do four strands doubled over. So again, measure out an arm's length, and then from there, I'll just double it over. So now I have two strands, three strands, and four strands. Again, this will also be determined by your size and length of whip. So I would encourage you to kind of experiment and see what sounds best for your whip. Cut that off here. Now, with this method, we are simply going to take our pen and we're just going to take our bundle of strands there, loop it over top of the pen or pencil. So it forms a loop here. And to twist it up, what we're going to do is place the free end under our foot on the floor. And then with this end, we're going to simply spin the pen or pencil in order to twist it up to the desired tightness. We're gonna take one end and we're gonna loop it over top of our pen or pencil. Pinch that with our fingers. And the other end is just gonna go under our foot and we're just simply going to twist. And 
And once again, we will know when we're to our desired tension when we can release some of the tension a little bit here and it starts to twist up on itself. So I need to go a little bit farther. Like I said, this isn't my preferred method, but if you don't have a hemostat, it definitely works. Awesome. And we, again, you might be able to see there, we have some twists forming in the strand when we release it, right? So now again, we're going to grab both ends. And here, if you don't have a hook, you could always loop it around a toe as well. And again, that will get you your strand folded in half. And then from there, again, we're just going to twist clockwise, pinch and release. Twist clockwise, pinch, release. We'll do that until it is completely twisted up there. And again, you should be able to let that end go and it won't come unraveled. Now that we have our strands folded over and twisted up, again, we're going to measure eight inches for our twisted portion, which is right there. And now for our knot, because we don't have the hemostats, we're just going to tie a simple overhand knot in it. So I'm just gonna take this Twist it around itself and pull the ends through. Again, I have my fingers pinched at that eight inch mark. I'm gonna pull that tight there. And then again, we're just going to cut off any strands that are longer than that two inch tassel mark. So I'm gonna measure off two inch tassels and then we're just going to snip off those extras there. And there we have it. Two ways to make your very own crackers for your whips. Now, the best way to attach your cracker to your whip is to simply poke a hole into the end of your fall using, uh, sometimes I'll use a nail or a needle, or in this case, my Marlin spike that I use for untying knots and whatnot. So we poke a hole into the end of our fall, all the way through there. And we simply take our cracker and put it through the hole. And then we're going to untwist the looped end And we're going to pull our tasseled end of the cracker through that loop. And then we're just going to pull it tight. And this is the best way that I have found to put a cracker on your whips, especially your nylon whips, because it will not just slide off like other forms of attaching your cracker to the whip will. Well, that's it for today. Now you guys can make your own crackers at home. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe and make sure you hit that bell button so that you don't miss out on any more of our Whiptastic content that we have coming up for you guys. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.